So, uh, yeah, talking about, uh, talking about the body of Christ. Last week we did a, a deep dive into the theology of this subject on, uh, on how just as Jesus uh, came as God incarnate, God in the flesh, uh, to bring our salvation, so the church is sent to be Jesus in the flesh, Jesus in the flesh, to, uh, that Jesus would continue his ministry on earth through us. It's not just a fancy metaphor that we, the Bible says over and over, and if you, if you missed it, go back and watch last week's message, but it's not just a fancy me metaphor that the Bible says over and over that we are the body of Christ, but he literally wants to walk around on planet earth changing lives and destinies, and to do so through us. We are his feet going. We are his hands extended. And today we want to look at what that means, not just theologically, but practically, that we are the body of Christ. And uh, so today's message is entitled, Connected by design. <clears throat> the uh, first verse I want to look at today is uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. It says, now, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. And this verse speaks of the, the corporate and the individual nature of our role as the body of Christ. Now you, plural, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. We are only fully the body of Christ as we do what we do together. That was the intention. That we would be the body of Christ together. But, that, but together only happens if each of us contributes our part. We need each other to be the body of Christ. Right? And the truth is that, that we have, between us, we have... We have Varied gifts and callings. Um, <clears throat> verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 to 7 says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. See, the, see the gifts, the uniqueness that you and I bring to the body of Christ are manifestations of the Spirit. It's the Spirit of God at work through us, right? To each one of you, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. God did not put in you the things he put in you just for you. But he put them in you for the sake of the body. For the sake of the world. For the sake of others. For, co for the common good. Right? You may have noticed. We're all different. Some of us more different than others, but we're all different. <laughs> right? We're all different. Our backgrounds, our stories, our cultures, our passions, our interests, our skills, our spiritual gifts, the ways that we learn, the ways that we communicate. And sometimes those differences can be really frustrating. But they can also be 
really beautiful when they come together and God has his way doing what he wants to do through us. If we stop trying for a moment to make other people to be like us and just learn from each other, if we can see each other as complementing us instead of clashing with us, then we'll begin to understand how important each person and each person's gifts are to the whole body. When, when, we're, uh, when we're recruiting, oftentimes, not just at seasons like this when we're ramping up ministries for the year, but throughout the year, we're, we're you know, strengthening teams, strengthening ministries. Many of you have gotten the phone call from the pastor or somebody, excuse me, on the staff team. You know, we're looking for this. Would you be interested in helping out with this, etc.? When we're recruiting for a role in ministry, we're often thinking through the congregation and guessing at who might be good at something and, and bring a lot to that particular team. Sometimes we happen upon a great fit, right? Um, sometimes the person, you know, at the end of the phone call or partway through the phone call says, says no. You know what? A no, a no is disappointing if the person is saying by their no, I have no interest in serving, please leave me alone. And some people mean that when they say no, right? But if the answer is, I don't think that's what God is calling me to do, but I'm going to pray and see what God, what might be a better fit for me as I serve. I'm thrilled to hear a no like that, right? That someone desires to be engaged with what God has put on the inside of them, engaged in ministry, engaged in, in for the common good, serving. But they, they, they want to find where they fit. Folks, this isn't just about, hey, we've got a bunch of holes we need to fill. Hey, you do this, you do this, you do this. It's not just about plugging holes. It's about coming alongside each other. Saying, what is it that fires you up? What is it that makes you tick? What is it that you are passionate about, that you love to do? And how can we help you Apply that for the sake of the kingdom, right? To bring the best of who we are for the sake of the kingdom. At Evangel, we have, uh, we have a, a, a number of ministries, many ministries, and many ways to serve. And, uh, and we're going to highlight those today. We're going to uh, try to do it really quickly. Um, but we're going to highlight through those, and, and, uh, and the ones that I, that I mentioned, we're going to put them up on the screen, we're going to fly through them, talk about some of them and what they are and, you know, that kind of thing. And all of the things you'll see up on the screen are also out in the lobby. We have a, we have a kind of a job fair, ministry fair, out in the lobby, right? An opportunity for you to go and see what, what's there, what... What are some of the things that, that need attention, that need help? Where might I fit? Right? Because we want to help you find where you fit. And, uh, and, and we've got cookies. <laughs> Homemade, really good cookies. So we want you to stick around. We want you to stick around, enjoy some coffee and some cookies. And, and spend some time looking at, at stuff there. And uh, I'll give you some instructions at the end of the service how you can let us know that you're interested in, in any of those areas. Um, so we have a lot of ministries that we are doing and hoping to do this fall as we ramp up again. 
But there are also ministries and callings in this room crying out to be be brought into being. There are things we have not even thought about that you are passionate about. And we would love to see those things happen as well. So as you're giving thought today, as we're all giving thought today, as to where we fit in the body, what part we are in the body, um, maybe, maybe God's calling for you doesn't fit our list and doesn't even exist yet, but may the Holy Spirit breathe upon your dreams and passions and desires for His kingdom and, and some, let something spark in you. Amen? So we want to talk through some of the teams that we have uh, here at Evangel. Uh, first one is First Impressions Team. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly through these really fast. A couple of them we're going to highlight this morning, but we're going to fly through them pretty fast. Um, our first, first we've, we've kind of collected different teams and ministries into... Uh, groupings. And so the first grouping we would call first impressions. So all the different ways that people have a first impression as they come to Evangel. As they come visit us, they come for a, a week or, or a few weeks. You know, what, what is it that they encounter? What is it that they see? And so our host team that's in the lobby, greeting people, helping people to feel at home. That's what a host does, Right? And so our host team is here to help people feel at home when they walk through the door. Uh, our coffee team that makes, makes coffee every week to, uh, uh, to, you know, to, to, again, make it feel homey here as we, as we welcome people in our doors. We, we, we need some more people in both of those teams to, to greet people as they come in. Some of you have really friendly faces and, uh, and you'd be a great addition to either of these teams. Um, some of you, some of you, I wouldn't serve on that team. I I wouldn't be good on that team. Anyways, um, next steps is, uh, when, when somebody's newer to our church, we help them figure out what are their next steps in becoming part of our church family and taking the next steps in their spiritual journey. Um, our decor team is, uh, it is what it says. We have a team of people that, that, uh, with different seasons, set up the decor and so on for us. Um, they've got an eye for that. Again, not a team for me. Um, social media. We need to remember in this day and age that our front door is not just that door, but we also have an online front door. And we need people to have a good first impression when they see what we are online. So we would love to have some people who have some skill and passion for that be part of that all right administration the nuts and bolts of things that we do around here so financial counting team we've got uh uh we've got people who we meet every week to count the offering and make sure the deposit is is prepared and all that kind of stuff uh office admin helps there's always projects uh that that michelin could could have you do if you've got a heart for organizing and and uh that kind of thing um you know you are you are a unique bird and we would love to have you plugged into those things because i you know i hate i hate administration stuff it's it's my the bane of my existence but um but there are people who love that god bless them right our library and bookstore both of these things have been sleeping and dormant for a while and we need to see that um, back uh, functional and serving our church again. Um, and we've had some interest, and, and we'll hope to see that uh, take off in the next little while. Plan to protect. Uh, this is a, a really important part of, uh, of kind of administrating our church, and we, we're building a team to, to help us organize that, make sure our kids are safe, and we're 
doing the things that we do uh, properly. All right? Um, congregational care. We have a care team uh, led by uh, Kathy and uh, Kathy Scott, and uh, she has been uh, organizing people for if somebody's come out of the hospital and they need meals, uh, there's a bunch of you who make meals and get that to people, and uh, you, I've heard so many stories of how people have been so blessed by this church and how we take care of each other in, that, in those kind of practical ways. And uh, visits to those who need visits, uh, the shut-ins and those kind of things. Uh, our breakthrough team, that's at the, oftentimes at the end of the service, we'll make opportunity for people to receive prayer for healing or breakthrough in their lives. And that's the team that does that. They come up and they stand here and they pray for people. That's our breakthrough team. And if you'd love to, to pray for people, uh, we've got a place for you in that team. Prayer ministry. There, there are a number of ways that we, uh, that we have opportunity for prayer. Saturday night, we have an intercessory prayer meeting here every Saturday night. We'd love to have you join us if you've got a heart for prayer. Um, and praying for our, not, not just our service and for people for healing, but just praying for our city. Uh, urgent prayer chain. We have a, a phone chain. If, if you have an urgent need, you get a hold of us and let us know. We put that on the prayer chain and people call each other and they're praying for those needs right, right away. So if you want to get in on that, that's, that's an opportunity as well. Community. That's not the community out there, but that's community here, our family. Um, one of the things is connect groups. And uh, is that set up? Yep. Hello? Yep. Was that good to go? Okay. Okay. <laughs> signs and wonders. I make signs and she wonders. Okay. Edna, were you going to share just a moment what... Uh, Oh, <laughs> see, we're not on the same page at all. Okay, uh, we'll do that. We'll do that in a minute. Okay, sorry, folks. Connect groups. Um, we uh, we have a number of. We have, I think, al 10? 11 including Alpha. We've got ten regular connect groups launching this fall. That's amazing. That's fantastic. That means a lot of you are involved in home groups where we get together and we have community together, connection together. We get around God's word. We learn and we grow together. We be a family together, right? There's, there's only so much connection that can happen in this setting, but in our connect groups, uh, that's the place where it really happens uh, more, than, more than anywhere. Um, Alpha is, uh, is an, a ministry for... Uh, those who are seeking to, to, to know more about who Jesus is, know more about what the, the Christian faith is. And this year, last year we did it as a great big thing downstairs with a meal. This year we're doing it as a unique connect group, as a unique small group. And, uh, and Jim and Karen are going to be leading that. So if you know anybody that, that uh, fits that, that, uh, that role, you know, that demographic, point them that way. There will be cookies. All about the cookies. Um, men's groups, women's groups. We've got, we've got one men's group, two women's groups starting in our connect groups, unique groups this year. And also men's and women's events coming up. Um, discipleship. Helping people intentionally, helping people who are new to Christ grow in their faith. And uh, we've, we've seen some great things happen with that over the last year. Um, not sure what that is. That's not me. What's that? Um, um, elevate youth. Uh, Jim and, and, uh, so Jim and Rhonda and Natalie are our leadership team there starting this fall. And uh, Jim, I just wanted to get you to say for a second what, 
Why, why are you excited about youth this First fall? First of all, I'm excited because Natalie and Rhonda laugh at my jokes. Yeah. So that's a big that's thing. That's good. But it, I'm excited to get the, the youth program going because that is the foundation of our, of, our, of our church. We need to move the youth forward. We need to move the youth forward with the moral compass that is God. And we need them. It's a Friday night, 6.30 to 8.30. And we want them to have that ability to see that God loves them. Yeah. And we want them to learn about God in a relaxed, friendly environment where they can have fun. This past week, we made bridges. We wanted to see how much the bridge could hold for weight. Uh, we're doing tie-dye next week. If you have, and here's a little plug, we're looking for T-shirts. And uh, we'd like to do tie-dyeing. We're going back to the 60s, you know, groovy and things like that. Anyone know those words? But we want them to have fun, but we want them to know who God is. Yeah. And we want your teen, and we want your neighbor, and we want your neighbor's neighbor to come and join us. So if you see someone between the age of grade 6, was that 10, 11, 12, and 17, you tell them where we are on Friday night, and we want everybody and all the teens to be here. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Good, good. Uh, kids, men. So we have, during the service on Sunday mornings, we have Little Jam, which is uh, ages 0 to 4, uh, our nursery, and uh, Kids Jam, so ages 5 to 11. And uh, uh, so we've got some great teams serving in those, in those ministries, and we're thankful for them. Uh, but we're also doing something a little new starting this fall, and uh, Pastor Pam's going to come and share just quickly about that. Yep, real quick, because we were supposed to be done 10 minutes ago. There's cookies waiting. All right, so uh, Kids Jam Sunday morning, kind of going back to a little bit more of a discipleship format, sort of like Sunday school from the days of old. But uh, downstairs, the kids go and they do that. But to keep sort of a really fun, lively aspect to what we're doing with kids, sort of building on the foundation of, you know, sort of like the VBS kind of thing, or maybe Kids Jam when we started it, we're going to be doing once a month Kids Jam adventures. So the first one in October is superhero adventure. I've got some real life superheroes coming, some firemen that are going to come talk to us. We're talking about bravery. We're talking about it from the word of God, but we're going to have a, a ton of fun. November, we're doing creative explosion adventure. So we're going to create, actually we're doing tie-dye t-shirts too. We're creating things to keep and we're creating things to give away in the nursing homes and we're exploding fruit and vegetables. So that's fun. And um, throwing them off the roof out there. Um, either way, it's going to be fun. Lots of fun for the kids. So once a month, kids kind of getting together, having fun, building connections, learning about God. And um, so that's kind of coming up this fall. Yeah. I have Bible man, Doug Dunnett, where are you? Are you in here? Oh, he's back there. He's going to show up as Bible man every month and bring in our memory verse in costume. Isn't that awesome? Anyway, that'll be fun. Um, but I need some people that can commit to once a month to have some fun with kids and do some cool stuff. So come talk to me if you're willing to help out with yeah. that. Yeah. So, and that's, that's a, a midweek thing. So to, uh, it's Wednesday nights. And so it's uh, outreach to the community as well. So taking kids jam and, and expanding out to, to the community. Uh, facility. Some of you love just serving in, in uh, handy ways. And uh, so our, we want to develop a maintenance team. <clears throat> Mark does a lot of work leading maintenance stuff. But if you'd like to be part of a team with him, we'd love to, to grow that team uh, doing maintenance inside and out. Uh, custodial team. Uh, just uh, we've got a custodian, but uh, but there's always extra extra hands. If you like to, to putter away and help us with that stuff, it's great. Um, IT team, we've got somebody uh, actually. Um, Kevin is uh, Kevin's retired this week, <laughs> and uh, and he's been working at it with what time he's had over the last while. But he's going to dive a little more into helping us with our IT in the building. But uh, I'm sure if, if you've got some skills in that area and want to come alongside, uh, he'd love to, to, to work with you. Uh, sign team, just taking care of uh, the sign. And, uh, uh, you know, our, our one of the ways we communicate to the community out there. Uh, outreach. We've, uh, we've just, uh, as we said last week, um, last week, week before, week before. Um, we've just uh, welcomed Jim on 
as uh, pastor of community outreach. And so he's helping us kind of look at what doors are there in the community, opportunities to serve. And we've already been seeing some cool things. It was one, uh, the, uh, the school board has received eight, almost $8,000 for food security for the high school students. And so for all students. And uh, they're looking for organizations that will make meals that can be frozen ahead and, and, uh, and help families that, that don't have, what an amazing opportunity that would be to serve our community, right? And there's, there's opportunities like this opening all the time. And if you're interested in, in serving in some way in outreach, that'd be fantastic. We've got a evangelism training coming in October. Again, Gather to Go is coming and we're going to be uh, you know, being equipped to go out on the streets and share Jesus. Uh, uh, skate park, we need, we need some people. We've really struggled the last couple of years getting uh, a team uh, committed for the skate park. And so we're trying to decide this year, do we do it again next year? And, and uh, so if, if you'd like to just give a, a couple hours once a week in the summer and, and go sit and, and serve stuff at the canteen, that would be a big help. Um, Terry Fox Elementary, where we've got the, you know, we're gathering the stuff and we're serving them throughout the year and it's exciting to be able to do that and other service projects as well. Um, kitchen. We desperately need a kitchen coordinator. If you have skills in the kitchen, if you love to cook, if you love to, you know, help, help food stuff happen and make people happy with food, um, we need this role filled desperately. Um, so calling all kitchen people. But, uh, uh, and teams for events, for Soup Sunday and the things that we do throughout the year to, to serve food, uh, funerals and so on. So um, uh, if you'd like to be involved in the kitchen, we need, we need to know. And worship. Uh, our tech team up there in the sound booth that looks after sound and live stream and the computer that does the lyrics and all that stuff. Uh, if you'd like to do that kind of stuff, we need people on that team. Musicians, if you got some hidden music skills that you haven't shared with anyone, share them with us. Um, singers and leaders. All right, so all kinds of stuff. One thing that I wanted to mention, and that's... Uh, uh, and that's seniors. And uh, uh, we, have, we, for a number of years, many years, had a, a fantastic seniors ministry here. COVID caused us to kind of shut that all down and, and so on. And, uh, and it's been a challenge to kind of find the timing and, you know, are the seniors ready and all of that stuff for, for rebooting that. Um, so we're looking at uh, possibly a couple of events this year, um, but also uh, looking at, we're going back into the, the care homes again, uh, doing services in the care homes and that kind of thing. So Edna, you want to share a bit about seniors ministry? Uh, yeah, they just asked me to share a bit and... Um I have a heart for seniors, as all of you know, because my mom was saved at a senior's ministry. Mm. And uh, it mean, from that time on, I was in my 30s, and I started helping out with seniors and stood by so many people that put their heart and soul into that ministry that I look around today. And it has meant so much to our community, to our church, and we'd really like to see that kick off again. We probably would never be able to do it to the extent of what we were doing it before because it takes a lot of people to do um, seniors the way that we were. And, uh, but there's always a way that we can do that. And an idea that got tossed out as well was uh, having uh, tea and tunes, I think it was called, to do with uh, having, just having tea and dessert and having music and having the, the, ch the seniors be able to come, that we can minister them from this church as well as out into our community. Because it's amazing even now how many times you run into people from the community that uh, you had a uh, connection with through seniors. And even now, they still say how much they enjoyed the opportunity to come out, to get together, and, uh, 
and, and uh, just the fellowship. And so uh, I encourage you, if you're interested in helping in that ministry, uh, it won't be as heavy of a burden, but I believe it's going to be a great blessing. Yeah. Thank you. It's great. Yeah, tea and tunes. Good, good. All right. So, as a body, we are, this is, isn't that a creepy picture? Yeah. Figure that's what you're all talking about. That is creepy. But so is a half-formed body of Christ, right? Something not right about a half-formed body of Christ. Romans 12, verse 4 says, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. You know that you actually belong to everyone else in this room, and so do I, and so does everyone else. We belong to each other. We're not our own. We're not just on a solo journey through this thing. We actually belong to one another. 1 Peter 4, verse 9 and 10 says, Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Again, what God has put inside of you, he hasn't put, in it, put it in you just for you. We belong to each other. I'm going to skip over my last point because time is gone. So, all of this scripture, which is all fantastic, we're going to skip today and ask the big question, where do you fit? Where do you fit? Right? God has put his body together on purpose. He's, we are connected by design. And uh, so I'm going to ask you to stand. And uh, I want to pray for us. And then I'm going to invite you to join us in the lobby. It's going to get a little crowded. That's okay. Um, but there's some great, some great cookies out there. There's some, some coffee and tea. And uh, I want to invite you to mill around. There's At every station in the lobby, there are little cards that just say, I'm interested in more information about blank ministry and a place to put your name. And if there's any stirrings in your heart that you'd like to know more information about getting involved in, in serving in some way, um, why don't you just put your name down, and uh, we'd love to have a conversation with you. There's a, a little basket on the way out the door. Just drop that card in the basket, and we'll be in touch over the next week or so and, uh, and touch base with you. All right? Father, we thank you. Thank you for the body of Christ. Thank you that so many of us have experienced this family, this body, this church, God, as encouraging and blessing and strengthening their lives. I thank you that we have the opportunity, God, to, to serve one another, to be a part of this journey together. God, some of us in this room are, are very connected. Some of us maybe need to, may, may need to, to, to be careful about how connected and how busy we are, how committed to ministry that we are. And some of us, if we're honest, are underconnected. God, I just pray that you would 
Help us to find where we fit. Because God, you made each one of us amazingly. Some of us in this room aren't sure that they're included in that category, but God, every one of us, you have made amazingly. You have put things on the inside of us that you don't want buried and hidden, but you want to be a blessing to others. So I pray that you'd lead us. Holy Spirit, come and fill this room and fill this building in this next few moments. Because this is a holy thing. As holy as anything else we've done here today. To honestly ask, God, where do I fit? What are you calling me to do? Come lead us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And may I say too, if you're filling out one of those cards, or you're, as I, as I said earlier, you know, there, maybe there's something that doesn't fit our list. Grab one of those cards and write whatever it is. If you've got a passion for underwater basket weaving and you want to use it for the kingdom, write it on a paper and put it in the thing and we will talk to you. All right?